One, two, three, four. Nobody, baby. 
Well, hello, everybody. I'm Aisha Jaffer, your weekday host here at The Current, and I'm here with Alex G. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Well, you have this new record, God Save the Animals, and I want to say, it's like it's almost a habit to say, like, this is your ninth studio record, but it's not. <laughs> it's your first record that you kind of explored and dived into the world of studios outside of your home. Yeah. And so, like, what was that process like? Basically, I got to record at the studio and then had them send me all the stems of everything I recorded. And then I could edit it on my own time uh, at home, which was nice. Because I guess that's 90% of my process is like chopping stuff up and moving it around. So it was nice being able to maintain that. Do you think you'll like incorporate like going to the studio, bringing it to home, like more in your future process? I think so, yeah. Because um, having an engineer who's you know, 
having an engineer was great. Someone who could like get the best sound out of every instrument instead of, I, I usually engineer it myself and I would do it haphazardly. And sometimes I get a good take, but the mic would be in the wrong place. And right. so it's nice having a pro do it. Yeah. It's always nice to have like a second pair of eyes or something or ears really yeah, <laughs> in this exactly. case, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So, and I also read that somewhere that you worked with uh, Jake Portrait from mm -hmm. Unknown Mortal Orchestra. And so I was wondering how you guys connected and like what that collaboration process was. So this is the fourth time I've worked with them. The, the first time I worked with them was my first record with Domino, Beach Music. And um, I hired him to mix it. And then we've worked, he, he's mixed my first three records with Domino. And then for this fourth one, uh, we collaborated on the production. I think I relied on him with, I guess dealing with studio sounds and stuff, there's like a new, a new level of like, there's a lot of different things that could go wrong, I guess, when the sounds higher quality versus like trying to get it myself with these lo-fi sound so it was nice having his ears and his experience with that like telling me when to when it's a good take when it's a bad take or when I should use this synth instead of this synthesizer or like you know this bass instead of this bass it's stuff like that you know what I mean like yeah. he just has way more experience than me in that department so and with the vocal takes it was really valuable working with him because you know, just having someone else be like, just do that again. You know, you didn't get it perfect that time. So Yeah. It's like your coach. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's like cool. That. Yeah. I would argue you always had hi-fi sounds, even with, you know, from home to studio. I, so I feel like that too. Yeah. But but I guess, um, I guess it's different because the studio, like, like when I recorded myself, the drums would be like one or two tracks. And in the studio, I get like 10 tracks back for the drums and right. so i'm just like i don't even know where to right. start with this <laughs> <laughs> but now you got it i mean yeah. it comes through in this record which is it's so much fun uh i Thanks. feel like i'm going on a journey which i absolutely love but i have to i have to start with the title i know it's a simple question but i used to be a park ranger so it's got my attention god mm. save the animals mm. so i'm just curious the inspiration behind that title i i wish i had a good answer but i it was a song i was working on that didn't end up on the record but that was one of the lyrics, and I liked the way it sounded. So um, it just felt like it aligned somehow with the rest of the songs, and I didn't think very hard about what it, it means. Usually know. those are the best titles, though. <laughs> cool. I'm it glad you think good, so. You know? Thanks, yeah. Uh, well, and that kind of, I mean, God Save the Animals. So I noticed there's some, like, faith and for. For faith and forgiveness themes, I think, throughout the record. That's mm -hmm. my interpretation. Is that subconscious or conscious? Oh, uh, I guess it's it's conscious. I mean, it's tough answering stuff like this because I think the whole process is re like really um, going off of my gut, you know, and not trying to set out what I'm going to do before I do it. But then, yeah, like... Like obviously, looking at the record, I think there those themes are in there. So, so yeah. Yeah, that's fun though. It's kind of fun when it just kind of like so maybe it's a little bit of both really because you just kind of if you're going on instinct like yeah it flows through it and I know that um, sometimes it's ambiguous like with being like what I mean like what is the song what is the song about or what is this inspired by but I actually have a fun question for you because I know that your your fans like they like to interpret these songs mm. and so I was just curious like do you have like a favorite interpretation that you've like heard from a a, a fan or a listener of the of the record because it's always oh. fun to dive into that to be honest with this this time I I haven't heard any like interpretations about this record mm -hmm. i've been avoiding like i've been avoiding reading stuff online because i'm just trying to keep it positive while we're touring so i don't yeah, want to look no, on the internet yeah, that's fair <laughs> but um i do love 
seeing that stuff sometimes, but yeah, I haven't seen any for this record. Yet. Okay. Well, that's good. That will be like, hopefully a positive, like if you ever go to it, like <laughs> yeah. journey that you go on, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, well, that's, I mean, and to say that you're on the road now and it's mm-hmm. mostly sold out tour, which is awesome. So what, what does that feel like now? Because there's been this time of like forced stillness. So what does it feel like to be back on the road? It feels good. This is our first tour with a, a bus which has been awesome because we have a more regular sleep schedule, you know? So I think everyone's in a better mood. I mean, we all, my band who just played with me, that's Sam playing guitar, Tom playing drums, and John playing the bass. And uh, we've been touring together for years. And, you know, they're like my, some, my closest friends, you know? But yeah, it's great that we have all this this new level of like stability on the road which is really nice yeah do you, do you have phones in your box phones yeah oh like this kind yeah, of the phone, phone. <laughs> N- um no no uh, no we have our cell phones in there <laughs> okay, i'm sorry okay. i was confused by what you meant i was like no i no, just yeah. know there's those old school ones and your tour manager i met seems so fun that it'd be fun to just he would have the main phone just keep calling him <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've heard of that like some bunks have like a phone like one bunk will have a phone directly to the driver or something like that <laughs> But no, we don't. That would be really cool. Okay. We do have like defunct DVD players in our bunks that just, yeah, they don't work anymore and they just take up all this space. Like, oh, no. I think I bump my head on it every night. Oh, no. Next one, next bus. Just trade that for phones. Yeah, <laughs> trade it for phones. <laughs> uh, well, okay. So uh, I know we were talking before and I'm I'm curious now. Like, so you kind of, you came up with, you know, your radio station. I know you used to hang out at the radio station and play shows with that. And I heard something that this specific record that your radio listening habits kind of influenced the sound. Mm. And I was just wondering if you could walk me through that. Um, yeah, like, I guess I, I guess, okay, so I'll start by saying I, I've always really liked the radio and I listen to it a lot because I drive around a lot and I didn't have a, I don't have an aux cable, you know, so I've just listened to the radio. And, um, this record, I guess maybe because I was in a studio, I was could be a little more ambitious with the sounds I was capturing. So I felt like it was more in my uh, grasp to make, you know, like a bass drum and like, like a drum kit, like I hear on a pop song on the radio or like a, like a synth line, like I've heard on the radio, something like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Whereas in the past I'd be like, Oh, I love this song, but I gotta figure out how to make these sounds in my own way. This time I think, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Right? Yeah, I yeah, know so, what you're saying, yeah. So I guess that's why uh, this one's a little more radio influence. It's, it's not like um, I suddenly saw the beauty in pop music on the radio. I guess it's just more that I felt that it was more attainable for me to make stuff like that. Yeah, I love that, though. Like, it's good exploration. You kind of collage it to make your own sound. It's mm. definitely your own sound. Oh, thanks. I'm yeah. glad you think so. <laughs> I'll say from, you know, kind of listening and, and through, like, you know, through time with all of your albums, it all has its own Alex G sound. So Thank you. That's my my interpretation of it. <laughs> well, so with God Save the Animals, I know um, things are, I love, I kind of love how you phrased this in the past. I've something about like the music speaks for itself. Like it kind of takes its own story to these people. But what, what is your hope that people take away from God Saves the Animals or any of your music really? I don't know. I guess I hope that they buy tickets once they hear it to the shows or (laughs) I don't know. I make it, it's not like I'm just, I don't want to, lie and say like I'm just making music for myself like it's purely for me like I I like that it brings me like um respect and like it's I like that it's become a career for me but I don't have a clear idea of what I'm trying to do with it other than make stuff that sounds good to me and then hopefully People can get involved in it however they want. But, yeah, I don't really know 
what I want people to get out of it other than I hope they like it and they don't think it's a joke or something. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think, I think the, the show selling out like speaks for that for sure. They want to yeah. be part of the experience. They're buying <laughs> the tickets and, and the music resonates in, the, in this way, it, like strikes a chord with people in, in a certain way. And I think that's so awesome that even there is a forum to interpret, you know? Yeah. Like I, I'm so grateful that that's the way it, it's going, you know? Yeah. I'm just so grateful for it. And, and I, have no I don't I yeah it's just it is what it is you know yeah yeah well there's another aspect of your career too you scored a horror film is, is it uh we're all going to the world's fair yeah yeah so I have a kind of a silly question and you you can answer it if you have the answer or not but <laughs> it is Halloween today mm-hmm. and so I was curious if you have your own kind of spooky story oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I uh <laughs> I wish I had any like good answers for you, and but <laughs> it's I just okay. Got That's all good. Um, uh, can't think of any spooky stories. Like when I was a kid, we I grew up in a house that had um the basement. It was an unfinished basement, and then we tried to finish it and paint it. And there was this like graffiti on the wall that said something kind of like really nasty about the previous owner. Oh. And when we painted over the wall, it, it, uh, the, the graffiti kept like bleeding through the paint. So just like you, it couldn't be painted over. Uh, it's pretty interesting, but. What's the, do you know the story? Like why did they not like the neighbor or, or why did, were they unliked? You know, I don't remember exactly, but I know my mom thinks there was like, foul play like there's a woman who lived there with her husband and then her husband started seeing like a friend of his daughter or something Uh, i hope i'm not butchering the story but yeah something like that and then the the wife mysteriously died Ooh, yeah Ooh, okay that's pretty that's pretty spooky (laughs) yeah i had had to think for a second but yeah (laughs) Well, thank you for playing along with me. Yeah, Uh, yeah. Is there anything else you want our listeners to know about Alex G? No, no, I think I think I'm all set. All right, cool. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me and thank being you. here at the current. Thanks for um, having us. And you know, God Save the Animals is out now. Thank you so much, Alex G, for being here. Thank you. <laughs>